This conference will now be recorded. Hey guys, this is Naveen here. Welcome back to Naveen Automation Lab. So a quick video on uh, Spring Boot that how can you create a, a microservice, a small quick microservice which is up and running. And uh, that microservice can be accessed by any uh, you know, REST API. We will create one get API and we'll do that. So how to do that with the Spring Boot? It's uh, within five, 10 minutes, you can actually create a simple web service. And uh, if you really want to use for your practice point of view, you can use it. You can host it on, uh, host it on uh, your local server as well. And then through Spring Boot, and it's super easy, super quick, super fast. So let's see how to do that. So for doing this, I'm using IntelliJ. And what do you have to do, guys, that you simply go to start.spring.io to this particular website. And on here, you simple see, this is the Spring Initializer. So I'm going to use the Maven project. If you want to use Gradle, you can use Gradle also. I'm going to use Java, and I'm going to use the latest uh, version. This is 2.3.0. I'm not going to use Snapshot. And here I'm going to give the group ID. Let's see the group ID I'm giving. I'm going to create some calculator API. So calculator service I'm going to create. So I simply write, let's see, calculator. Okay, com dot calculator dot service. Whatever the group name you want to write. Artifact ID, I simply say that, okay, this is cal calculator service. Name, let it be like this. This is the demo for Spring Boot for uh, calculator something like this and this is the package name let's see com dot calculator dot service dot cal service i'm going to select jdk 8 over here java 8 and then select the jar file uh, as a packaging over here and then here you can add a multiple dependencies that what kind of dependencies you okay spring boot support so a lot of dependencies are there so what do you do you simply select this uh, spring web dependency first of all okay because we are going to create one uh, restful uh, using uh, spring mvc it will give you the one tomcat embedded container also so simple click on this and uh, that's it now what exactly you have to do you have to click on generate or you can click on control uh, you can click on explore and if you really want to explore so your prompt xml file will look like this and this will be the folder structure like this okay for your uh, project under SRC, we have all these services, and this is the Pomod XML file. You can download, you can copy, and this will be your Pomod XML file. Will be like this. What you have to do that uh, simple go back, simple close it, and simple generate. So it will give you a zip file, and it will give you a Maven project. Actually, it's very simple. So this is a calc service dot zip file. You go to folder. I'll go to that particular folder. And let's see, unzip this particular calci service dot zip. And this is available over here. You can see that formed XML file, your SRC and everything, main test Java, everything is written over here. It's a typical Maven project now, we got it. What we have to do after that, we have to go to your IntelliJ or Eclipse. I'm using IntelliJ right now. You go to file and uh, simple, let's see, click on uh, open and you need to import that particular project. So let's see, I'll go to downloads, KLC service, and click on open. And uh, let's see this window, a new window. So let's see, I'm going to create a new window. And you will see that uh, after a few seconds, this entire project will be created over here. You can see this is my pom.xml file. Okay, under this particular pom.xml file, I'm using JDK 1.8. This is the name and the description. This is the uh, group ID. ID that we have given this is the artifact ID that we have given versioning this is what we are using it and it gave it gives you some spring boot dependencies also let's say start web and uh, spring uh, boot started test also by default the spring boot uses j unit but you can use test ng also but we are not bothered about it so and then it will give you one uh, uh, maven plugin also so that you can execute your uh, you can compile your uh, code as well. So this is a typical basic thing that, okay, this guy has generated. Now, what we have to do, you just need to open your SRC folder. Under SRC, you will see main Java and uh, SRC test Java. So under SRC test Java, one test is already created, but nothing is there. So I'm not going to write any test. So simple, you just close it. Close your format XML file. And also, you directly go to SRC main Java. And here you will see this Spring Boot runner file over here. 
having this uh, particular you know main method and this is the service application dot class so this will behave like a, a service container for me which will execute okay which will execute the spring boot application so now i'm going to create one microservice so how to do that in the same package let's see i'm going to create a microservice i'm going to create a java class and in this particular java class let's see i'm going to create calculator service okay so let's see calculator service class i'm going to create in this particular survey the service provides four major operations for calculator let's see for uh, addition subtraction multiplication and division so what i'm going to do that i'm going to create first of all that uh, this will be this class will behave like a rest controller class for me so you have to add this rest controller annotation over here okay and then it will be imported from the spring boot web bind annotation on top of the class right after that you have to create four methods so my first method that uh, you have to associate that is called get mapping this will be my get call so i'm going to associate with this annotation that okay hey this will be my get call and when you create a get call that what are the different parameters you need so i wanted okay hey this will be my endpoint uh, service url that add and i'm going to pass two parameters uh, let's see x comma y so these are the two parameters let's see i'm going to pass so x and comma y you have to write like this it's like a variable okay and uh, after that what do you have to do that you have to create a method over here so that let's see i'm going to create we have to associate a method with this annotation let's see public void add and then as a path parameter okay so i simply say that okay as a path variable that we have to use what are the variables you have to use integer let's see x comma integer y right and so path variable x and at the rate same path variable for integer y also you have to do that so it means these are the two path variables i'll be using in my rest api and then you return what you simple give the addition of these two numbers so x plus y that's it when you return x plus y addition of these two numbers so instead of y i have to write integer over here okay so let's see this simple service add service i have created and we have exposed the endpoint url over here and then we will see that okay how exactly we are running just a second let me close my outlook okay now that's it after that what you have to do that uh, you have to execute your calculator service application which is having the main method and spring boot this is will this will behave like my runner class so spring boot will automatically check that okay yeah this is a runner class it will execute this uh, service and it will expose the service on tomcat so let's see how to do that so you simple right click on it and run this particular class over here okay but one thing you need to remember guys i'll tell you what is the problem the problem is uh, okay so let it run so your spring boot application is uh, okay getting started you can see that a spring getting started but uh, by default spring boot will start the tomcat which is running on 8080 but on my system 8080 port is already used because my jenkins is already running on 8080 but in your case you don't need to do that so let you can change the server's ip address also so how will you do that for doing this what you have to do you have to go to your uh, uh, go to your resources there you will get this application dot properties file which is totally blank what you have to do you have to write server dot port you can give your own port so let's see instead of 8080 i'm giving server port is equal to 8090 if you write is equal to zero every time it will generate a new port okay guys so better you write whatever the port number you want to write if you don't give server dot port it will simple execute your uh, tomcat on 8080 it will start your tomcat on 8080 but on 8080 if you see i'll show you see on my 8080 my tomcat uh, sorry uh, my jenkins is running actually see on 8080 my jenkins is running you can see that right so that's why 8080 port is already being used okay so that's why i'm exposing some other port number over here 8090 like that now let's uh, run this again and let's see what happens so now this time my okay api should be enabled on should be posted on tomcat with 8090 port so if everything looks good then it will okay so it's saying something over here you can see 
Yeah, so perfect. So it's saying that, okay, yeah, see, Tom can start it on port number 8090. Absolutely working fine. Now you do one thing, you just go to your browser, simple write localhost 8090, and simple write what kind of method you have. We have this add method, and what are the different parameters you want to pass? So let's say I'm going to pass 10, 10 slash 20 as a path parameter. What is the output you're getting? You're getting 30 over here. Can you see that? All right? If you pass, let's see 200, you are getting 210. It means we have created a calculator, guys. Right? a simple REST API that we have exposed over here. If you write 10.4, you are getting, because we are passing only integer, we are not passing double. So it's getting some error over here. So make sure that, okay, you're passing only and only, let's see, like this, right? Because we have used integer and we are passing the double value over here. So that's fine. You can use double value also. That's not an issue. Right now, similarly, if you want to use the JSON, let's say I want to uh, print, I want to uh, return the JSON. This is the response we are getting. What if the response I'm getting in the, I want to get in the form of a JSON object. So what you have to do that you, let's create one uh, response class over here. Okay, response.java. And in this particular response.java, you just click on it. You maintain a couple of variables over here. Let's see, my variable is, uh, uh, let's see, private integer uh, x variable, private integer y variable, and then I'll declare one result variable also, let's see, integer, which will hold my result, right? And I'm going to create one uh, constructor with the help of these three parameters. So right click on it, go to generate, and generate a constructor with the help of all these three parameters. So my constructor got created and I'm going to create getters also. Right click on it, go to generate, click on getter for all these parameters. So my <clears throat> three getter method also got created, right? Okay, now what I'm gonna do, I'm going to go to my microservice. So instead of X plus Y, what I'm gonna do that, okay, hey, don't return X plus Y, you simple write return response class object. So simple write, let's see, new uh, response. Okay, and uh, what do you have to pass? In the new response, you have to pass your variable. Which variable? That x comma y, and the result of addition. So we are doing addition over here. So it means simple return x plus y over here. That's it. It means if you are returning the response class object, so instead of integer, I have to write response over here. Simple. Now let's uh, stop the service and run it again. Okay, so my Spring Boot application will uh, start the service once again. And uh, let's see the Tomcat is getting started or not. Okay, so yep, Tomcat again running on 8090. Now, same application I'm going to hit with 102.200, you run it. Now this time what we are getting, see this is a response we are getting in the form of JSON object. So this is the JSON we are getting, can you see that? If you really want to validate, it's a simple JSON guys, it's simple, let's go to JSON. Uh, okay, JSON, any JSON validator. So let's go there and click copy paste and validate the JSON. See, this is the JSON that we are getting. X this, Y this, and result is 302. So simple one re response.java poso object I have created in this particular uh, POSO object, I'm simple creating the constructor, three getter method, and three private variables. I'm creating it and I'm giving the data to this particular guy, and then which is actually returning me the result over there, and that's it. So, this is the logic that we have written. Similarly, what you can do, you can create some other services also. So, let's create uh, other services, let's see, for other operations. Uh, instead of add, I'll be writing that, okay, hey, you have to do a subtraction. Subtraction means, let's see, x minus y, you have to do that. So x minus y, and let's see, this is this endpoint URL I'm giving sub this, okay? Similarly, let's see, I'm going to create a division. So I simply say that, okay, hey, division is the one, okay, endpoint URL, I mean, the service URL, not the endpoint URL, and uh, division means x divided by y. And the last one is, let's see, I'm going to create that uh, multiplication. So this is the multiplication, multiplication means x, multiply by y and a method name is multiplication so these four operations i have created add subtraction 
uh, division and multiplication and then you simply save it and run your service once again so i have created a simple calculator microservices microservices guys so it's very simple and uh, let's see if it is working or not let me check everything looks good to me and let's start the server and uh, let's see so i think yeah 8090 on port number 8090 it's working perfect now we will check this operation so i'll come over here so for this 102 this it's absolutely working fine now let's do oops sorry local host 8090 slash let's see some subtraction uh 20 minus 10 so see 20 minus 10 result is 10 we are getting same thing let's see i'm doing some multiplication so 20 multiplied by 10 200 we are getting same thing let's see we are doing some division so 20 divided by 10 result 2 is getting it's awesome right so see like this you can create n number of services and spring boot will take care of everything so i'm not going to talk about what is uh, dependency injection and all of the features about spring and spring boot but this is a simple quick a web service that we have created and uh, a microservice that we have created which is exposed by a uh, get rest api and you can simply uh, this is a controller api that we have created and then you can simply start using it okay so for this that's it guys simple that's it okay so please try this uh, spring initializer you can create your own project it will give you a maven project or you can use a gradle project also if you want to use some other language let's see groovy or kotlin also you can use that you can add multiple dependencies for other development point of view and it's very very easy to do that very fast like that it's very very lightweight okay so i'll try that if i can uh, upload some more videos on spring boot it's not the series guys. Right? it's just a quick video i thought of creating for you guys so that you can at least start creating your basic service and start doing that so you hit your service and execute through your rest assured or whatever you hit this particular url and it will work fine you will hit this particular url from your from your uh, okay from anywhere from your postman or whatever or in the form of curl also you can do that let me check if it's working with curl or not so you can do that guys that's uh, it's not a big deal so it's just an okay api now so if you hit this see you are getting the result in the form of json now result is two you can see that i'll hit it again we are getting the same thing over here like this okay so yeah i'll do one thing that uh, okay let's take one more example curl instead of div let's do some multiplication see what we are getting can you see that see we are getting this result is 200 so you can use curl also you can use postman also you need one rest line to hit this api that's it okay so that's all for this particular video i hope you enjoyed and let me know if you have any issues if you're not able to configure it please put the comment over there and please subscribe to the channel if you are liking such videos thank you so much thanks for watching this video guys.